Hi everyone, my name is Silvia Perez and I'm an application engineer here at Hawk Ridge Systems. Today I'll be going over what is required to get the option to export the, the new in-mold residual stresses from plastics to SOLIDWORKS simulation. In 2014, after you run a plastic study, you are given the option to export the residual stresses to SOLIDWORKS simulation to allow you to see if your model is structurally sound. The in-mold residual stresses are important to know because they are the result of a non-uniform cooling or pressure variation that occurred during the, the molding process. If a part shows high levels of residual stresses, it has a greater chance of undergoing fracture or any physical changes after the molding. So in order to actually be able to export the results to simulation, there are a few things you actually need to get um, this option. The first thing is um, that is important is uh, we need to make sure that we are using SOLIDWORKS Plastics Premium or Advanced. Reason being is because we need to run a flow and pack analysis to actually get the in-mold residual stresses. From there, we can then uh, export this to SOLIDWORKS uh, simulation. We also need to make sure that we're running with a single uh, solid body. So unfortunately we won't be able to do a family style type of uh, plastic analysis. We would have to do a single body. We also need to make sure that uh, when we create the plastic study, we create a solid manual mesh. Right? So we can't really utilize the, the automatic or the, the, the shell mesh uh, type. It does require the solid manual mesh. We also need to utilize an isotropic material. And we need to make sure that uh, we enable the res residual stress calculation option that's inside the packing setting. Lastly, like I mentioned before, uh, in order to export this, uh, we need to make sure that we also have SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium. Since we are dealing with uh, plastic material, we, will, we would want to utilize the nonlinear study that's available in that package. So if we take a look at this example here, we're going to be running a plastic analysis on this iPhone part. Uh, so if I switch over to my configuration that just shows the iPhone part, uh, we can go into the plastic settings here. And the first thing that we need to do is, like I mentioned, uh, we need to create a solid manual mesh. So when we right click on the solid parameter here, we need to make sure we choose the manual approach and we can proceed forward to uh, the mesh settings here, you know, and everything should be like normal, just like how you would set up any problem. We can adjust the triangle size, set up auto uh, local refinement, and then we'll get our mesh, you know, and make sure that everything's okay in the summary, and then we can accept that and then uh, create our um, proceed to our second step there. In that case, we would just set up everything like normal. We would specify a uh, some type of material. Again, it has to be an isotropic material. Uh, we can specify that. Uh, and then we need to make sure that when we go into the pack settings, we have this uh, residual stress calculation option enabled. You shouldn't have to worry about it too much because it should be on by default. All right. And then other than that, uh, we would need to, uh, for this example at least, we are going to keep all the fill settings uh, by default. But again, you would adjust these accordingly in your uh, specific problem. We will then input our injection location, which could be somewhere in the center of our part. And lastly, after you set up your actual problem, we need to make sure that we run a flow and pack analysis. Right? So if we take a look at an example that's already been run, and take a look at the pack results, we see that we have the residual stress um, at post filling at the end. So we can take a look at these results at the plastic level. But again, the new functionality that's available for Plastics 2014 is being able to export this into SOLIDWORKS simulation. So how do we do that? So after you run the results, uh, you should see underneath the result folder an export option. So after you select export, you then have the opportunity here to select what you want to export to. In this case, we want to export it to SOLIDWORKS simulation. Making sure that um, the in mold residual stresses are selected, it should be on by default. You can then hit export, and you see that the file type that will save is a .poe file. We can save that anywhere we like. You know, we can save it to where the actual results are for plastics. 
And then after we export it, we can then turn on our simulation and create a nonlinear study. Right? Again, we are working with the plastic material, so we're going to have to utilize a nonlinear um, study that's located or that's available for us in Simulation Premium. Right? And then you set up your problem like normal in the static analysis. You'll input your material or you can export it for, from the plastic analysis. But how you actually add a new or the in mold residual stresses is by right click on the external load and you see that we have that option there, in mold residual stress. And after you select that option, you can then browse to that .poe file, making sure you have that enabled. And after you hit OK, you should have this icon here, in mold stresses, that is available under the external loads option. Then you set up your problem like normal. You can run your uh, nonlinear analysis and take a look at the stress displacement and strain results accordingly. Okay. So in this video, we saw how we can get access to the new in-mold residual export option that's available in Plastics 2014. Thanks for watching.